I'm joined with Rayan from River Prescient Institute. <sighs> Worst name ever. Oh, uh, no, I got the, uh, the old for the flick. No, I don't have the flick. No, you definitely didn't have the no, old flickety flick. <laughs> and I just like to pat it down just a little bit. After the rough beating you just gave it. It just squirts out. <sighs> we'll cut it out. We'll cut that out. No, we won't. <laughs> I pre-spritzed. <laughs> Sorry. Come settle down. Sure Look at that. Hi, welcome to Shuey's Barbecue, where you'll learn the tips and tricks to master your grill. Today, I'm starting a new series of cooks with backyard barbecues. And today, I'm starting it off with Rayan from Rib Appreciation Society on Instagram. So, what are we cooking today, Rayan? Today, we're cooking a St. Louis style cut ribs with a bit of a twist. Bit of a twist. Mm -hmm. Now, if you haven't already given the video a thumbs up, go do it now, share it with your mates. Also, leave a comment. The other thing is, it is so easy to follow this channel by hitting that subscribe and the bell button. That way, you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Jump on my Instagram account and also go and check out the Facebook page. And while you are on Instagram, check out River Appreciation Society for great content every week. So, so let's, let's get, get into, into it. it. So, Ryan, I can see that you've chosen St. Louis style cut ribs. How are we going to prep them? So I'm just going to pull the back membrane off. Sometimes it doesn't come out all at once. I was going to ask, should you do it all at once? Uh, should do that for the film next time, but uh, this time we're just going to pull that off like that. And off it goes. I'm also going to trim off some of the excess fat. Oh, off you go. Right. Yeah, sweet. I think most people by now should know to remove the membrane because it doesn't cook down, it's chewy. Yep. So just get rid of it. Absolutely. He's drinking cheese. Um, did you? You whispered into the mic. No. <laughs> Cheers. So obviously we're on to the seasoning part. Yep. Um, mustard. Oh, I thought we were doing ribs. Are you making me some hot dogs? No, nah, mate. No, nah, no. Nah. I'm going to use the mustard as a bit of a binder to get the uh, the rub on. And um, sorry. Just, Don't be sorry. No, it's because they rub on. Let's go. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> you can rub on all you want. I'm not gonna say, I'll give you some time. Do you want some zinking music? Yes, please. Oh. I'm using the uh, mustard uh, to help bind the rub onto the meat. So I'm just gonna flip this rack over, start with the underside to begin with. Um, that way when we flip it back, you're not gonna have the top side of the rub coming off. Um, put a little bit of mustard on top. I don't really use a heck of a lot, just enough just to give it a light coating. And it's a bit rough. It likes it rough. Oh, okay. Do you want me to open that? Uh, no, I got the, uh, the old flickety flick. No, I don't have the flick. No, you definitely didn't have the no, old flickety flick. <laughs> that was great. You liked it? It was good, <laughs> yeah. Let's do it. So we're just a bit of evil sprinkling over the top. Love the lone stuff. I can smell it from here. Oh, it's got punch, doesn't it? But I'm right next to it, so I should yeah, be able to smell it. Yeah, you, you, you can't. I've got a nose. No. And I just like to pat it down just a little bit. After the rough beating you just gave it. Yeah, just a, are you okay? Yeah, you're all right. Good, good, good. And the underside will probably add a bit more rub later on in the, when we do the wrapping stage anyway, mm -hmm. uh, to all of it. Uh, same thing, just a thin line. And just try and get some rub on the outs on the sides as well. Okay. Just so that um, at the end process you can start to get some rub on those sides to get some flavour onto it. Same sort of thing, just from the top. Gee, you've done that before. Just a couple of times, maybe. <laughs> you have you done the class too? I've done the class. You done the two? I've done it, done it three times. <laughs> it first two it, times. It takes a little while. Well, the first two times I just ate the rub. No, that's the problem. Well, I must say, mate, I am really interested in trying these because I haven't used yeah. a binder for years, so I can't wait. So, Brian. Yes. Uh, Weber's. 
I have a few. You do. Different you do. sizes, yeah. different colours, different models. You're cooking today. What do you want to use? Chewy, I think I'm going to use your white kettle over there. But you'll get it dirty. Uh, I will promise to clean it really well. Okay. I think I'll use the snake method. Um, and flipper. I forgot. Flipper? No, we don't cook dolphin on this show. Definitely not dolphin, guys. Uh, I use the snake method because uh, it's easy, really easy to set up and handles the temperature and controls temperature really simply as well. And you don't need to use a dolphin. So I'll just start by lining up all the briquettes in a domino style around the outer side of the grate. As you can see, I'm just going to add a second line around the first line on the outside. And I'll finish the snake off with a, uh, a line on the top. Then I'm going to line up 12 briquettes and pop them at the end of the snake. All right. As I want to be smoking at 120 Celsius. No worries, Michael. <laughs> Hang on. There, we, there it is. That's making it. <sighs> Come over. Don't have to be shy. Not too close. So, are you going to be using any smoking wood today? Absolutely. So, I'm going to be using some apple wood today because it pairs really well with pork. Yeah, nice. So now that the web is at temp, we're going to get the, uh, the ribs on. Sweet. Just going to place it over here, away from the heat. Now I'm just going to put the lid on, making sure the vent is on the opposite side of the heat source, of the, of the snake. And I'm going to come back and check in this in an hour. Beer time. Beer time. All right, guys, it's been uh, roughly about an hour, Sherry. Okay. So I think it's time to have a quick look, All see right. if there's any dry spots and see how it's traveling and probably Give it a bit of a spritz. I've pre-spritzed. <laughs> Sorry. Come settle down. Sure. Spritz. Settle down. <laughs> let's try that again. So yeah, let me uh, we'll open up and have a look. Yeah, let's have a look. Cool. Ooh, Ooh nice oh, colour. She's coming out nicely. The snake's going real great. Uh, a little bit of dry spots there, so I might give it a bit of a spritz. And looks like the, um, the rub's really tacked on as well, which is really good. Get a little spritz on there. All right, all right. Chuck the lid back on. Make sure the uh, the vents are opposite the end of the heat, and uh, come check back in an hour. Sounds good. Easy. More beer for me. Oh yeah. Cheers. Cheers. All right. We are smoking at a low indirect heat of 120 degrees Celsius today. Now these ribs are going to take anywhere between three to four hours. It's a nice chunky set of St. Louis cut. Well, for those of you who like to use my beer timer, you're looking at, I'd say, an eight beer cook. So, cheers. Okay, Rayan, you've kept me waiting. What are we waiting for? Well, Shui, we've been waiting for the, uh, the rub on the ribs to tack on or set. Um, and you can see, notice that by how it gets dry. Uh, on the actual rack and um, and then also for the temps it's 74 degrees Celsius uh, mm. on the actual rack so using a temp probe to try and get that out of it. Okay. All right so I've got two layers of foil here ready to go. Gonna get the uh, the rack off. Give it some of the uh, Lane's one-legged sauce. That stuff's got a good kick to it too. Yeah and just give it a bit of a just a little spread around a little bit and just for a little bit of extra kick Rub on top. Is that the same rub you use at the start? Sam rub, the SPF 53. Flip it over and repeat. Oh, that's really thick stuff. Pop it back on the lever. No worries. You do that. Beer time? Beer time. Cheers. How long are we going to leave it in the lever for? Probably another hour, an hour and a half or so. Um, and we'll just check on the tamp in about an hour just to see how things are traveling. Sweet. Cool. So, I saw you checking the ribs. What were you looking for? Man, I was just checking to make sure they were a little bit tender. Tender? And yeah. how were you doing that? Were you giving a bit of a punch like Rocky? No, 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 none of that. Just no. uh, use the metal probe on their thermopen. Yep. Between the bones just to see if they slid in nice and easy and, and? the ribs to get glazed up. Beautiful. A bit of a glaze. Now, I haven't glazed it too much because I think we both find out that that sauce, the one legged chicken sauce is... Oh, that hurts. Straight fine. <laughs> straight fine. So, this is going to be an interesting taste test. Um, and then we're just going to back in there for 15 minutes for a bit of a glaze. Well, stop yapping and oh, get him on. Right. 
I'm hungry. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> How good do they look? All right, let's dig in. Whoa, 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 hang on a second. What? Um, I've made, my, made us some uh, blue cheese sauce because this is my take on buffalo wings, but with ribs. Yum. Get that on there now. Oh, mate, look at that. <laughs> mate, you got too excited. I did, I did. That is nuts. Look at that. Cheers. Cheers. Oh. It's a pork chicken wing. I know I say this every week, but that should be illegal. Well done, man. 